Hey, what do you call that? I call that what I see it. Sure, I get that. But what do you call it, exactly? I call it a guy decked out in plaid on the side of the road talking to a dinosaur. I thought I'd gone delirious. Hmm. This would be a case of it takes all kinds. All kinds or all sorts? What the hell is the difference? All kinds, all sorts, same thing. Well, I was being glib. I meant, you know, all sorts. The candies. I have no reference for that. You never had an all sorts? I'm pretty sure I have. To reiterate, it takes all sorts. You said it takes all kinds. <sighs> it's not the same thing. All sorts are candies. Right. I've already covered that ground. Have you ever had an all sorts, Lewis? I don't know. What sort of thing are they? I'm really struggling at this point not to say all sorts. This conversation is going nowhere. Hmm. Concentration at this juncture is key. Aren't you supposed to be on the stakeout? What's at stake? The guy's probably sleeping or something. Seems likely. It is a bright, sunny day. A criminal element isn't likely to come out into such hostile conditions. Not even for some candy that nobody knows what the hell it is. Kind of like licorice flavor. Red or black? Black. Hmm. I like black licorice, but I think I'd just buy some licorice and not mess around with some sort of fancy named licorice-like article. Well, they are very fancy. I mean, there's yellow banana ones and blue and some are whitish, some are pink, magenta even. They sound too fancy for my taste. Mm. I think maybe you shouldn't judge things out of hand. Maybe it's because you haven't had one of those candies that's made you so insufferable. Hmm. That may well be, but I'm told that it takes all sorts to make up the world. I'd therefore be worried about some sort of dimensional instability occurring from me trying them. My lack of knowledge of these little candies might be the key to making me just different enough so that the world can keep ticking along intact. If I were to conform to the degree of actually acquainting myself with all sorts, perhaps the world would collapse in on itself in a giant sigh of dissolute fine language. You are indeed the linchpin of the cosmos, Lewis. I have often suspected as much. What sort of plaid is that? I don't know. Red, white, and blue? <laughs> exactly. There's a pattern emerging here, Aquinas. It's plaid. I know. I said that. No. It's... it's what's emerging. It's plaid. The pattern. Good point, that. There is a reason why I keep you around. I thought it was because I'm still sucker enough to partner with you. You wound me, Aquinas. <laughs> that isn't a becoming trait in a partner, I gotta say. Oh, I can tell you some stories about unbecoming partners, Lewis. You were on the right track with the emerging pattern being plaid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's re-examine that, shall we? So what's with the plaid? It's not just the plaid, either. It's the lizard, too. The red and blue Mwanza flat-headed Agamo lizard looks nothing at all like that. Right. I can imagine. From the name I'm deducing, it looks absolutely nothing like the green foam and velour monstrosity in front of us. <laughs> That's why they pay you the big bucks. It looks absolutely nothing like that thing. The red and blue Mwanza flat-headed Agamo lizard is, as the name suggests, red and blue. 
It's also commonly spotted in a kind of hunched up sort of position, thusly, as it hunts its prey. Hmm? That guy's standing pretty tall. Exactly. The red and blue Mwanza flat-headed agamo lizard, as a matter uh, of fact... You know what? You really love to say that, don't you? Say what? Red-headed blue Mwamba origami thingy. You would say it all the time, too, if you could get away with it, sweetheart. It's the red and blue Mwanza flat-headed agamo lizard. Its similarity lies in the plaid rather than the fact that both of the things happen to be lizards. It's red and blue. And so, very nearly alike to the plaid that's beset me all day. Red and blue plaid. Red, blue, and white plaid. Oh. There's no white on the wamba lizard? No, thing? no. But he looks strikingly like Spider-Man. So I like to bring it up every chance I get. Just like Spider-Man. I kid you not. They have the same tailor. But Spider-Man is only red and blue, so he doesn't fit the pattern. True. White might be a red herring in this case. So to speak. Red and blue are very important colors, though. I mean, look at the next time you go shopping. When you go into one of those big, yeah, massive... Shopping mall, strip mall, internet... Yeah, all those things. Look around. They all feature a prevalence of red and blue. Mm. That's for a good reason, which I'll get to in a minute. Mm. I can hardly wait. Now, just take one minute here, Aquinas. Take one minute. Settle down. <coughs> Relax yourself. Close your eyes. Breathe deep. Relax. That's nice. Keep that up. Hey. Sorry. <clears throat> I digress. C close your eyes, though. Just relax. I won't talk. All right. Now, imagine that you want to blow up the world. You think about that for a minute. Then you remember that there is a button for that exact purpose. A button to blow up the world. Exactly. Now, <clears throat> imagine the button. Imagine pressing the button. What color is the button? It's red. Exactly. It's a coincidence. <laughs> what kind of cop are you? There ain't no such thing as coincidence. So, my red destruction of the known world button means what? Everyone imagines it's red. It's the sign of a healthy mind. If you see it, it's red. Anything else is a sign of an unbalanced personality. So what color is it when you imagine it? <laughs> red, smartass. Blue's an important color too, though. It's what you need when you have to wake up. It suppresses melatonin levels. It makes you feel more alert. Blue kills bacteria. It's powerful stuff. But there's no light. It's plaid. Is it just plaid, Aquinas? How old are you? <clears throat> None of your business. Well, how old is plaid? No goddamn clue. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You might have been able to reason your way out of my relentless maze of logic if you'd only worn a blue shirt today instead of that red number. What does that have to do with anything? Red lowers IQs. It is also suggestive to a man that a woman who wears it is an estrus and thus ready to mate. Ow! What was that for? Thinking about me in reference to mating, ever. I'm starting to hate this conversation, Lewis. Well, you should be more careful of what you wear, though. I mean, honestly, these things play an important role in how we're perceived by others. If you were a waitress, you'd get more tips for wearing that shirt. Uh, because it's red. 
because it's red. And that time you wore the red shade of lipstick and those, I don't know, those fuck me shoes. Fuck me shoes? Yeah, those ones you wore to the last Christmas party. You mean slingbacks? Yeah, whatever you want to call them, sweetheart. So, what's with the white background on the plaid? Mm. I'm still sorting that out. There's a lot of unresolved questions about what effect white light has on people. I can tell you one thing, though. Fluorescent lights will give you cataracts for sure. Wish I had cataracts. Right now. Hmm. He's a really handsome lizard.